Welcome to this episode of the vlog. Today I just wanted to share a couple of cool memories of Andrew Bonar, affectionately known as Boney. Um, and I did have the good pleasure of hanging out with Boney for six years, um, you know, during my college years when I played with the SFU Pipe Band. And uh, <laughs> no, it didn't take me six years uh, to get through college. It took me four and a bit, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, couple of interesting stories about Boney. So the first time I played my first major concert with the band, and this was long before anyone in the band really knew me, and they, uh, I certainly, you know, I'm sure I came off as an extremely cocky uh, young kid that joined the band. And of course, a band like SFU, there's tons of cocky people that come around, right? Because it's, you know, one of the very best bands uh, in the history of the universe. At least that's this man's opinion. And uh, anyway, cocky, super young kid, but uh, Boney and uh, Dave Hicks in the band, uh, I'm sure they were curious to see, like, what kind of cocky I was. Like, if I, if I had, like, a sense of humor about myself and if I could sort of roll with things and socialize well with the group. So in the green room of my very first concert in the Vogue Theater uh, in Vancouver, you know, it's my first concert, you know, super excited, probably overly excited about everything and not really sure what's going on. And like, I must have stepped away for like a bite to eat or to go to the bathroom or something. And Boney and Dave Hicks like switched out the reed in my chanter with an uh, with a busted reed that was like literally folded over the edge. And um, you know, I was not the wiser, and so I, I came in and then I got my pipes going for the next warm up that we had in the green room. And of course, my pipes weren't working, and I I kind of panicked because. I didn't want to make a total fool of myself in front of the group. Of course, there was this broken reed in there. And uh, I tried to play it cool, just kind of looked around, and I found the two guys laughing at me, which were Boney and Hixie. And um, they were, of course, you know, this was all in good fun, especially because they saw that I was kind of not totally spazzing out, and uh, but they could just sort of see I was panicked. So they gave me my reed back, and that was pretty, uh, I don't know, just a pretty fun story. Let me actually preface this by saying the first two years I played in SFU, I was a, a sort of a commuting player and I would uh, spend my summers in Vancouver with the band and I'd stay at Jack Lee's house. Uh, but then when I finally moved to the area to start going to school, uh, Boney was great about reaching out and he knew I liked to play golf and so uh, he would invite me to play. He was a great golfer, like virtually almost a scratch golfer. like. Like a bad day for him was shooting in the low 80s. But anyway, uh, I remember one particular golf outing. I was reminiscing with him about how it's how cool it was to be golfing with Andrew Bonar. Uh, and I wasn't blowing smoke up his butt. I was, but it was really kind of interesting because my dad and I used to listen to um, the Megantic Outlaw CD, which is 78th Fraser Highlander's album from the early 90s. And he had this face melting solo on it. And I remember reminiscing with my dad, like, and, and uh, I was like, man, wouldn't it be amazing to be able to play like this someday? And my dad was like, you know, I think if you keep at it, you will be able to play like that someday. And I didn't even really think that was possible. But then sure enough, like, and I was telling Boney about this on the golf course, like, it has a lot of meaning to be hanging out with you and playing golf because I remember talking with my dad about how maybe someday I could kind of play my bagpipes with the likes of, you know, Boney and these other guys. So that was a really kind of fun, uh, special memory that I have uh, with Boney. So that was pretty cool. Boney was a guy who, at least to me, you know, we were good friends for a relatively short period. And there's a lot of people out there who knew him a lot better than I did. But I will say that he was a guy who insisted on bagpiping being a truly fun thing that he loved to do that enriched his life. And I think that, you know, even before we knew Boney was sick and he might not be with us that much longer, like, you know, even before then, one of the great lessons I took away from Boney was, you know, how to continue to just be light about things and not take things too, too seriously. And, uh, you know, in retrospect and moving forward, like there's always these situations where myself and other people I know, like we take this bagpipe stuff just a little bit too far. We get, you know, we get upset about things or we push ourselves too hard or, 
you know, we push ourselves past the point of truly enjoying what we're doing, but Boney was just an amazing, you know, because he was in it. He was a better player than basically all of us, um, and he was more successful, you know, more competitive, super into it, ultra talented, but he always had a ton of fun with it, never talked bad about anybody, always loved to crack jokes, and that's why he did it. Uh, he did it to have a lot of fun, so anyway... That's me done blabbing about Boney. We'll certainly miss you, and uh, you know, uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, you're able to get a little piece of what Boney was about through this vlog episode today. But if not, it was definitely therapeutic to put it together. So there you go. Forgot to mention, I have a cool little tiny piece of a clip of Boney playing that Megantic Outlaw solo I was talking about. Um, it's just, it gets cut off, unfortunately, but uh, Michael Gray's YouTube channel uh, post, posted a lot of these videos from the Megantic Outlaw concert, which is my favorite concert ever, so uh, Michael, if you're out there, thank you so much for posting those. Uh, they're truly, truly cool. Uh, but anyway, I thought I would just splice a little bit of that in so you can get a little idea of what Boney was doing that just inspired so many people with that solo.